Hello, everybody. It's nice to be here. I will be presenting the group effort. And as an introductory part, I would uh, like to stress three elements of the title of the presentation. So the first one is literary corpora, which its definition is quite self-explanatory. But it's um, important to see literary corpus uh, in the neighborhood of uh, linguistic corpus as a bigger um, element. And if we want to see literary corpus as a something uh, separate, then we have to follow some discipline specificity for uh, material selection and metadata uh, uh, categories uh, specific to literary research. Um, perhaps you already heard about uh, uh, the survey, how do you uh, compose your literary corpus or literary collection, so you can, um, or if you're not, uh, you can fulfill uh, the survey and help uh, answering the question how literary corpora, corpora should look like. But if you decide to build it, build it from the scratch, then you have uh, several difficulties uh, to follow. So you have to assess the uh, rep representativeness of the data, you have to uh, deal with formats and text quality, and uh, for certain you will have to deal with missing and limited metadata. As an example of literary corpus, I would like to show you uh, 1920 uh, Meta PNC, uh, which is uh, metadata enriched Polish novel corpus from the 19th and 20th century. Uh, this is the creation um, of uh, our group, and we wanted to trace the impact of historical and spatial factors on the dynamic, uh, dynamics of literary process. And we uh, studied uh, the transformation of rural and urban dichotomy in Polish fiction. So uh, we brought together novels originally written in Polish and first uh, published as a book, as book between 1864 and 1939. And for the balancing criteria, we include date, gender, level of reception, and place of publication. And I want to stop at that uh, moment because the place of publication is quite tricky. So uh, uh, a bit uh, of historical background. Poland, uh, there was no Poland on maps in uh, 18th century. Uh, and it's important for our research because the territory was divided into three partitions. Prussian partition, Russian partition, and Austrian partition, and we include that element uh, in our research, and it's one of the metadata um, that you may find in the corpus. So this is the final result. We obtained 1,000 novels, and this is the visualization of the balancing uh, of that corpus. The second element is a fair, uh, there are fair um, principles, and we believe uh, corpus or literary corpora should be discussed uh, with a um, uh, neighborhood of uh, fair principles. So each literary corpus should be findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. And the last part is, of course, the most important, because what we've noticed, the literary corpus is very often a one-time gig. So you have a researcher that prepared the corpus, knows that corpus, answer um, uh, the questions, and no one else uses that corpus, which is uh, APT. So if you uh, want to have reusable uh, corpus, you have to think um, um, uh, also about linked data standards, and we all know the five-star linked data, but we propose to add sixth and seventh star. So six star means to provide your data with a schema and documentation so that people can understand and reuse your data. And seventh, to validate your data and denote its provenance so that people can trust the quality of your data. So two uh, important elements, understanding and reusing and trusting the quality. And the last element is metadata enrichment. So if you compose your corpus, you have to deal with metadata description. So you have to um, understand the difference between traditional catalog metadata that we can find in uh, bibliographies and uh, libraries um, that they were not meant to be researched and metadata for research purposes. So basically you have some questions, you have some labels, some elements that are important for your research and uh, it um, should be discussed in the matter of research metadata. 
but uh, with the second type of metadata, there is a problem because there is no sufficient metadata formats for such um, research uh, questions. So the um, basic uh, issue is how to make research-specific metadata easily comprehens comprehensible. And we believe the answer is TCO, which is text corpora ontology. It's currently work in progress, but we already used it for our uh, literary corpus. And we believe um, other researchers may be interested in co-developing such uh, ontology. There are um, uh, several uh, similar activities, so it's worth mentioning uh, to, to point Europeana data model and the Hathi Thrust Research Center works at ontology, but TCO has a slightly different um, uh, goals. And the main question is how to make your metadata properly enhanced. So how to change your plain TXT file with very uh, limited uh, information to the structure that can be uh, well known by other researchers. And this is our uh, answer. Uh, the answer is the meta corpus creation uh, workflow where you have three steps. The first is resource, then metadata, and finally research. So following the, uh, the creation of uh, literary corpus, you have to face your research uh, question-based metadata design. So there is an idea, uh, some questions, and we want to answer that question. To answer the questions, we need to collect the data, preferably with uh, uh, data reuse, then uh, our data should be uh, enriched with uh, persistent identifiers and leaked open, da leaked, uh, open data. Uh, then there is um, a step for metadata verification and perhaps manual completion. After that, it's time to um, put your uh, metadata and your uh, literary corpus into semantic environment and use ontologies. And the last element, the most uh, interesting part is uh, um, computational literary research. So you can um, ask your uh, literary corpus, but not only the text, but also all the metadata around the text that you um, obtained. And uh, this is not only an idea, uh, we used it. So I would like to present to you publicly available knowledge graph of uh, 20, uh, 1920 meta uh, PNC 1.1. So it's uh, available on repository on GitHub. You can find that graph, you can explore it, you can download it, uh, and if you want to do something with that graph, we are open to, to co collaborate. And to better understand that, that uh, graph and that literary corpus, we prepared also a documentation when you can find information about the specificity, contributor, contributors, corpus design, with some uh, basic um, statistics, the ontology explained, um, examples of classes, uh, and how to use it. But you won't find TXT files, because uh, following linked open data standards, we believe that uh, you can find the connection and then you can obtain some information. So we prepared Python code for you to explore our graph and follow the links uh, presented in that graph to harvest all of the texts for you. So you can recreate the literary corpus for yourself. And there is a uh, um, citation with the paper when we uh, tested uh, our uh, corpus for the first time. And uh, I want to uh, show you the possibilities, so going uh, towards computational literary research. Uh, this is um, a quick uh, a video from Neo4j when we uploaded our graph. And what is important to understand that here we have three types of dots. Uh, the yellow, oh sorry, um, the yellow dot is for partition, the uh, red dot is for a person, and the green dot is for a book. And here we ask a very simple question, show me all uh, the uh, books that were published in the partition that was the partition when the author was born. And we obtain three uh, clusters and here there is a triangle when we have clear connection between book, uh, person and uh, partition. Uh, the second question uh, was to uh, show uh, 
the books that were published in a different partitions than the partitions uh, that, was, that were um, place of birth on the author. And from the very left, uh, we already can see some uh, interesting uh, situations because uh, um, the very left is the Prussian partition when we have very little uh, red dots. So there are very little people that were from that partition and published in the uh, um, sec and the uh, um, second and third uh, partition. And in the same time, there is a lot of books published by people born in different partitions. These, um, these are not our um, uh, research questions. This is a simply observation because we uh, changed uh, um, the environment for our meta metadata. So we built RDF graph and now we can see uh, more. There is a third question when we can explore uh, a, a single author. That was quite interesting observation for us because we traced a person that was extremely popular 100 years ago and now is barely, uh, barely known. So here there are connections between three partitions and books uh, printed in all of them. And this is actually, after all this uh, uh, work, this is a starting point because now we can uh, think what else can be added to that, to that graph and uh, right from the top of our minds, we can uh, use text mining and NLP um, uh, activities to extract some extra elements, label them properly, include in the graph, and use uh, languages such as SparkQL or um, a Cypher query language to do proper computational research, uh, literary, literary research. Thank you very much for your attention.